All done? Uh, yeah. Where do you want them? Well, on my desk, or unless you'd like to set the table for Mr. Brownlow's meeting. Dave, how are you this morning? What? Oh, sir, um, I'm fine, thanks. You sure? Yeah. Well, it's just that this isn't what I'm paid to do, is it? Photo copying and putting out pencils. No, of course not. Still, one step at a time, eh? I'm sure when you fit the duties. Well, um, I'm fit now, sir. I've been signed off by the CMO. Ah, uh, doesn't Mr. Munro need you back? Well, not according to him. He doesn't feel I'm ready for full duties yet, sir. The CMO thinks you are. Oh, it's doing my head in stuck up here. Yes. You want to get back with the team? Well, of course I do. Starting when? Well, why not today? I mean, they're on late term. Are you sure you're fit for duty? Yes, sir. I'm absolutely fine. What are you doing? What does it look like? I wouldn't have thought you needed that. Or has Marion been losing her temper again? Oh, I've packed it in upstairs. I'm back on the team. Oh, that was quick. I bet you wish you'd been wearing that six weeks ago. No, I'm not blaming you, you know, but not wearing it. I mean, I like a straitjacket, isn't I? Well, you should know, Reg. Huh? Oh, I see. Straitjackets, learning. <laughs> Very funny. Have not your sense of humour, have you? No, just a couple of pints of my blood and a chunk of my liver. Yeah. Well, you'll be wearing one later, won't you? Hmm. Uh, no, actually, I'm not going out today. I'm uh, working on a special project. Well, I could stick him in CAD, ease him in gently. No need for that, Matt. He's ready for action. If you don't believe me, ask Mr Brownlow. Right, well, foot patrol or mobile unit. Well, he's not walking that well. He tries not to show it, but... Uh... So, Panda, who is it? That's going to be Tony, isn't it? Or George? I don't think so. Why not? It might bring back memories. Well, we can't keep them apart forever. No, but today's too soon. If there's any problem, I want Tony there to sort it. I thought you were coming back for ages. Change your plan. I'm here till six. So I want you to do a full shift. You know what my rose like. Hey. Hey. All right. All right. Hey, Dave, you're back. <laughs> hey, hey, listen, have you filled the most compensation forms yet? Uh, not yet, George. I haven't had a chance. Right, boys and girls, settle down, please. Well, listen, can you get them to me as soon as possible so I, you know, I can get the back? Yeah, give us a break, George, yeah? Oi, can we have a bit of ash? Sorry, Sarge. In case you haven't noticed, PC Quinnan is back on the beat, having been skiving in admin for a couple of weeks. Yeah. By way of a punishment for his absence without leave, I'm going to stick him in a panda with Tony. Oh, no. Afraid so. And I told St Hughes you're back. They've got a couple of units of your blood group standing by just in case. Only joking. There you go, Dave. Now, are you sure you're about to bend your legs all right, mate? <laughs> it's off, Tony. Something wrong? Why did they put Dave with Tony and not with me? After what happened last time. What do you think Dave said? Oh, I don't know. What do you think he chose Tony? It's not up to him, is it? Oh, I don't know. You know, it's his first day back and everything, isn't it? Maybe he doesn't trust me anymore. Oh, come off it, George. All right, Dave. <laughs> five. What? That's five times you've asked me if I'm all right. <laughs> Sorry, right, I'm just checking you're OK. I mean, it must feel a bit odd, you know, being out and about. It feels fine. Here we go. You up for this, Dave? Yep. Go ahead, Tony. Yeah, 
we're chasing two suspects back at the scrapyard in Denzel Street. One, I see one, a red jacket with yellow hair. The other, I see three in blue denim. Dave, what are you doing? I killed this one, yeah? I, I told you to. Nice one, Dave. Sorry. You know, Sarge, if I can be half as creative of our new website as the Kingston lads, I should be very happy. Well, if you're happy, I'm happy, Reg. Now, I suppose you think that a presence on the website isn't worthwhile, don't you? If I could show you some of the arrests that have resulted from surfing the net... You'd have to catch me first. Yeah. Mr Brownlow took some persuading that I could justify the cost. Then I said to him, look, it is very good PR for the Met as a whole, and for Sonny in particular. I've already got the template from the press bureau. All I've got to do is save my pages as HTMLs. Oh, that's hypertext markup language to you. Reg, you're confusing me. Was I going too fast? No. I mean, you're confusing me with someone that cares. That's, uh... What's his name? Ryan, isn't it? Larry, Lenny, something like that. So? There's a warrant outstanding. You sure? That's my way to find out. Lenny Ryan? No, Len. What's your dad's birth, Len? 4th of March, 83. OK, look, I've just got to check something. Do you mind waiting over there for a moment? Dave, sir. Sir, Oscar 595, Steve. Go ahead, Tony. Yeah, we've just stopped Liam Ryan at Gospel Avenue. Ooh, I think there's an arrest warrant outstanding. Could you do me a name check, please? Go ahead with the details. Uh, yeah, it's date of birth, 1383. I see one male. Tony! Cuff him! Cuff him! He's got a knife! He's got a blade on him! Are you sure? Hang on, let's search him first. Stand up, mate. All right, right, don't struggle, OK? Just take it easy. Just stand still, put your arms up, we'll do a quick search, you'll be away, OK? Well? I was sure. 595 from Sierra Oscar. Are you free to speak? Go ahead, Sodge. Right, we haven't got a warrant for Liam Ryan. Are you sure you're not thinking of his brother, Callum? He's wanted, but not Liam. Have you got Callum there with you too? Uh, no, just one very unhappy Liam. You think I'm going to forget this show wrong? Yeah, look, I'm sorry, mate. What about him? Yeah, he's sorry too. Aren't you, Dave? You want some compensation? Yeah, yeah, sure. Know? Look, uh, off you go, mate, yeah? A bit lucky, forget about that. with Tony is that he doesn't think before he does something. I mean, Dave could get hurt. If it was me, I'd look after him properly. He shouldn't need looking after. Sard? So, I haven't sight, Reg. Well, just catch you in the mood, you know. What's this, for your computer? Yeah, that's right, the virtual reality tour of Sunil. Sarge, so, would it be all right if I recorded some sounds in here? What sort of sounds? Well, radio traffic, radio banter. Nothing too fruity, obviously. you're feeling, Dave. But that's no excuse for going over the top. I was trying to look after us. Is that what you call it? I thought you had a knife. Well, you were wrong, weren't you? Do you want to go back to the Nick? Huh? What for? Well, I don't know. 85 from Sierra Oscar receiving. Go ahead. Are you free to deal? Yes, Sarge. 52. That's 52 Luxford Road. Suspect on premises. Informant unknown. Over. Sierra Oscar, can you deal? Sierra Oscar from Sierra One, we can take Luxford Road, over. Thanks, George. Did you get that, 85? Sierra One is dealing. You can get back to whatever you're doing. Received. What? I don't get you, Dave. You say you want to come back on duty, but he won't take any calls. 
Well, that was on the other side of the ground. Dave! Look, Dave. All units from Sierra Oscar. Can I have a volunteer to deliver a death message, please? Eight five, we can deal. Received. You want 19, that's 19. You said I wasn't taking any calls. I'll give you the details. But a death message? Well, someone's got to do it. Basement. We'll come back later. Uh, hello, we're looking for Alan Dodds. Yeah. Is that you? Yeah. Can we come in? What for? Well, we can talk inside, yeah? Please? You may wish to sit down, Mr Dodds. I'm afraid we've got some bad news. Is someone dead? Who is it, my dad? Well, it'd be better if you sit down, Mr. Dodds. Well, it took me five minutes to stand up. Come on, just tell me what's happened. There's been an accident in Hereford. The police there have told us that a woman they believe to be your wife was driving a car when it came off the road and, and turned over. She, um, she wasn't wearing a seatbelt. And uh, I'm sorry, I'm afraid she died at the scene. You have got a wife called Margaret, Mr. Dodds. Your name was on an organ donor card next of kin. Silly cow. I haven't seen her in five, six years. Uh, I thought there'd be someone else by now. Right, getting the call, eh? Funny old world. Is uh, am I supposed to do something? Uh, yeah, I've um, got the number of the police in Hereford. If you, if you give them a call, they'll let you know what has to happen. Is there a friend or a relative we can call for you? Or maybe someone who can come and help you? Don't need any help. But it's just that I thought with the... Uh... No, I can manage fine by myself. If there's nothing else, can you see yourselves out? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, go on, off you go. You've been calling me, Gary. Yeah, we need a qualified driver to ship the HGV. GV, you anywhere near Fish Lane, over? Uh, we're just round the corner, in Rails and Close. Close. Just leaving now, over. Received. Come on, Dave. Yeah, hang on, Tony. I don't think we should leave this bloke alone. Why not? I think he's in a state of shock. Rubbish, he's fine. No, I'm going to stay with him for a bit. What? You heard me. I've got a lorry to ship. I'm not stopping you. Oh, well, I've got to come back and get you, have I? Yeah, look, give me the keys, I drive myself. Well, what about me? Well, it's only round the corner, you can get the van to give you a lift back to the neck. Well, then what? I'll wait there, I suppose. Well, it depends if I finish by six, isn't it? That's when I'm knocking off, remember? It's only I'll pass for. How long are you planning to be in there? I know what you're up to, Dave. But if you stay here, everyone's going to think you've lost your bottle. Well, is that what you're going to tell them? I'm going to have to say something, aren't I? Well, I'll turn up by myself. Is this what you really want, Dave? To hide yourself away in there with him? Turn it! Keep going! Come on! 
Tony. My pleasure. What's wrong with the driver? Oh, he said he felt faint. I just caught a whiff of his breath. He's well pissed. Someone said you wanted a driver, darling. Too slow, Vicky. As usual. Where's Dave? Holding hands with a weirdo. What? He's looking after some bloke whose wife has died. And to be honest, George, I'm glad to be rid of Dave for a bit to stay easy. What, what do you mean? He's a liability, George. One minute he's trying to break some bloke's arm because he thinks he's got a knife. And then the next, he's keeping his head down, pretending he's not here. Give him a chance, Tony. It's only his first day back. I do realise that, Vicky. But if he wasn't ready, he shouldn't have come back. No, hold on, Tony. I think you're being unfair. No, George. It's him who's being unfair to the rest of us. Do you want another one? Right then, uh, I suppose I'd better let you get on, if you're sure you're OK. Like I keep saying, I'm fine. Well, I guess it must be a lot less painful if you haven't seen each other in ages. Yeah, I guess. What, six years or so, yeah? Longer. Got back from the golf in 91. You know, tried to keep it going for a year and a half. Must have been Christmas 92 last time I saw her. Well, the golf, what were you doing there? My job. Well, didn't he say how long he'd be? He reckoned the bloke wanted looking after. But you didn't? Didn't need two of us, sir. All right, Tony, when you finish rest, can you go to custody? Help out there till Dave brings the car back. Knew he wasn't ready! Have you seen a doctor? Don't need to. Body fixes itself, given time. Well, you should get some treatment. Maybe. So, you fought in the golf, did you? Yeah. What was it like? Cold at night. Who were you with? British Army. No, I meant, I meant which regiment. I know what you meant. Tea? Yeah, cheers. What are these guns? Armour lights? Uh, they're two of threes. 5.56 calibre automatic rifles, 40 mil grenade launchers underneath. Some of us took mini machine guns. We all had white foes, L2 grenades, some anti personnel mines, a couple of anti tank rockets, and as much high explosive as we could carry. Does that answer your question? Well, I wish we carried a bit more. All we got is what's on our belts. Better than nothing. Yeah, well, sometimes you need a bit more. When you get into real trouble, don't you? Mm. You've been in trouble yourself, then? Yeah. Yeah, I got stabbed. They nearly killed me. Milk and sugar. By the way, uh, how's Dave getting on? I wouldn't know. Well, where is he? Just leave it, Reggie. You know, when I was fed rep, I would have made it top priority to deal with any PC you got injured. What have you done for Dave? <laughs> I've seen him loads of times since he left hospital. I mean, we've been to the pub together. We talked about what happened. Like, he didn't want to talk, right? He, he just wanted a laugh, a, a game of pool and a few beers, that's all. Yeah, but have you offered him any practical support? I mean, what about his criminal injuries compensation claim? What's he done about that? He's got the forms. All he has to do is sign them. Mm. Of course, when I was fed rep, I would have dealt with anything like that before a PC come out of hospital. Well, you're going to end up in hospital if you don't shut it. There's one tour in South Armagh. It's up to my neck in mud. Two players in my sights. Both had longs. Longs? What was that? Longs. Rifles. So I shattered the warning and started to give them the good news with the M16. Slotted one of the boys and then got a stoppage. I'm <laughs> browning stuck in the mud. Players walking towards me taking pot shots at my face. And I knew then I was certain I was going to die. And you know what? I've never been so scared in all my life. Just started screaming. Couldn't help it. What happened? Pratt used all his ammo before he got me. Gave me time to clear the M16. Took him out with a headshot. Afterwards, uh, kept thinking back to that moment. The terror, the panic. 
going to face that sort of situation again. And I thought, yeah, that's what I joined up for. I mean, there's no point doing a job like mine or yours and honking about the danger. The danger's what we want, isn't it? Well, I guess I got addicted to the adrenaline. Couldn't get through the week without some kind of a drama. Nothing happened at work. I used to pick fights in pubs. I was a strong lad back then. Look at me now. Hero. Got the medals to prove it, yeah. I'm too scared to walk down the street in daylight. Why? I get laughed at. Kids point at me, call me names. Never thought I'd be scared of kids. Yeah. Bob. I've been trying to get hold of Dave Quillen on my PR. Yeah, we heard you, sir. So it is working? Well, you were R5 in here. Is Dave still in Relton Close? As far as I know. Jane, can I have your headset for a minute? I'll give it a go. Cheers. 340 from Sierra Oscar. Are you receiving? 340, are you receiving? You don't mind if I take this off, do you? I'll do what you like, mate. You sure you don't have to be somewhere else? No. No, I'm all right here. I'm all right. What's the matter? It's my scars. It's, it's the edges. The belt keeps catching them. Listen, look. What, what is this? Do you know? No, I don't want to. Do you think it's something to do with the golf? I mean... Well, those injections, they must Don't have... start on all that. I had all that from the missus. That's one of the reasons we split up. Yeah, but if you're ill and it's something to do with the MOD... I joined up knowing I'd be risking my life, right? If I die now, if I'd been killed years ago, same thing to me. Took my chances, made it this far. I don't want to start blaming someone else. Oh, here we go. It's a bit loud, isn't it? Yeah, tell my neighbours about it. Have you complained? Just the once. I smacked in the face. Big bloke, all tattoos and muscles. Name of Jefferson. Ever heard of him? No, he's been done for GBH. He got six months. Fancies himself as a bit of an R case. A few years ago, I'd have crippled anyone who'd come near me, even someone his size. Couldn't do anything about it. I had to lie there while he laughed at me. I'm sorry. Hurry up, Rich. There. Gotcha, sir. Thank you for that. Thank you very much, sir. Now, there's just the Welcome to Sun Hill speech. That will be downloaded to anyone who clicks on your icon. Thank you. <coughs> Hello? Hello, I'm Chief Superintendent Brownlow. The OQ commanding. That's head honcho. Head honcho? Who wrote this dribble? Well, actually, it was me, sir. You're welcome to give it a punish. Well, I can't say that. Or that. Or that. You'll be very impressed, sir, with the rest of the website. I will run it by you, obviously, you know, before I send it off to the yard. Yes, I think that will be wise. Yeah, before you know it, you'll have 2,000 visitors a month. Really? Yeah. But you do agree, don't you? I mean, it is a fantastic PR opportunity. No matter how impressive the website, it is not going to replace the Bobby on the beat. It, well, no, sir. But the website will always be there. It won't go disappearing for hours on end. Unlike certain colleagues I could mention. <laughs> what are you talking about, Reg? Won't you, sir? Dave Quinnan. I mean... I'm not blaming him, obviously. I mean, he hasn't been given the support that he should have had. Now, when I was Federation rep, I would have been absolutely... just tell me what has happened. But if you apply for compensation, then you could get a better place to live. I'm all right here. Or don't you get lonely? I'm happy by myself. I've got my telly, library down the road, my book to write. Well, what's that about? It's about to get me into trouble if I ever finish it. 
done quicker if it weren't for that racket. Well, there you are. Get a brief, make a claim, then you can afford a better Don't place. listen to you. I don't want anything to do with compensation. It's a joke. Oh, I've seen some dead bodies. I've got post-traumatic stress disorder. Can I have some money, please? Your favour? Just tell me why a soldier who gets his foot blown off in Bosnia doesn't deserve a penny, but if it happens in Belfast, bingo. Where's the sense in yeah, that? I agree. I agree. It's unfair sometimes. But don't you think if a copper gets injured on duty... It's your job. You get paid for it. You take the rough with the smooth and stop complaining. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, well, maybe you're right. I don't know if I can take much more of this. Go on, beer, mate. Pop upstairs, ask him to turn it down, eh? Huh? Well, he's not breaking a law, is he? Tom, shut up anyway. You can walk up them stairs, no bother me, it'll take half an hour. <laughs> what are you afraid of? Well, I don't know. <laughs> I, ju I just can't. Come on, you can do it, it's easy. No. No, it's not. That's the problem. Do it anyway. Quinn I'm from Sun Hill. I was, I was wondering if you could turn the music down, please. Why should we? It's not late. It's not a party. We can do what we like in our own home. It's you very know. loud. You can't make us do nothing. So get lost. Any trouble? Huh? Lucky for you. Sir. Yeah, have you seen him? No, he's out and about. Shall I call him? No, no thanks. If you do see him, tell him I like a word, will you? Right, sir. Oh, if you could explain why Dave Kernan wasn't given lighter duties today. Well, Mr Munro thought he was ready for anything. Decided to chuck him in the deep end. Really? Right, thank you, Matthew. Sir? I see one male, bleeding and unconscious. No description of the assailant, informant unknown. Sierra Oscar from Sierra One, can you repeat the exact location, please? Yes, yeah, it's the Children's Adventure Playground. In Rowan Close? Yeah, that's received. Sierra One, show us on scene, Relton Close. Ambulance is right behind us. Yeah, he's alive. What's that smell? Is that, is that CS? Has he been sprayed? Yeah, I do. I think he has. What's going on? What's happening? Can you stand back, please? Tommy? Do you know this man? Yes, I do. He's my boyfriend. He only went out for some facts. Okay, he's going to be just fine. The ambulance is here oh, now. Vicky. Okay. Please. Vic. Is he going to be all right? Vic. It's one of us. I'll tell you who that belongs to. PC Quinnan from Sun Hill. What makes you say that? Because he came round our flat earlier looking for trouble. He must have followed Tommy out here. He's done this. Everything all right, George?
Jenny. Jenny. Oh, over there. Sorry, Dave. It's still manic. Yeah, I just want five minutes. I haven't got the time. I'm really sorry. I need to talk to you. What is it? What's the matter? Are you all right? Yeah, no, I'm OK. I... Well, that's not true, is it? Nurse! I've got to go. Can you not wait a few minutes more? Well, I should have knocked off at six. No, don't worry. Don't worry. I'm really sorry. Come back out again, again tomorrow, yeah? Uh, when can we talk to him? Oh, it shouldn't be too long. He needs a few stitches and we'll have to check there's nothing wrong with his head. Yeah, but he's conscious now. He can tell us what happened. Uh, yeah, just give us ten minutes. Fancy a drink? Uh, no, no, you're right. All right, well, it won't be long. Oh, uh, Sarge, it's George. Well, I'd, I just wondered if anyone knew where Dave was. from 340. Were you calling me, Sarge? Just a bit, Dave. What's your location? Yeah, heading back to the station now, Sarge. Good. Mr Monroe wants to see you as soon as possible. Received. Where's Quinlan? Have you nicked him yet? What for? I told you to beat up my boyfriend. <laughs> yeah, of course he did. I saw him do it. He used one of the metal truncheons. You've all got him. First he sprayed him with CS gas, then he whacked him round the head. And you saw all this happen, did you? Yeah, I did. So why didn't you say anything before? Cos I was in shock, weren't I? So, where exactly were you when you saw this old place? I was in our flat looking out of the window. And how far away is that? 50 yards. <laughs> yeah, well, you see, the assault actually took place round the corner. Well, you can see round corners, can you? OK, I wasn't in our flat, I was across the road. I saw everything from just across the road, and it was definitely PC Quinnan. <laughs> yeah. Right, George, L let me know what he says, yeah? Thanks. Bye, yeah. You wanted to see me, sir? Yes, Dave. Um, hey, come with me, will you? Come in, Dave. Uh, take a seat. Now, before we start, can I have a look at your CS spray? Why? I'll explain in a minute. Why well, I haven't got it, sir. Uh, did you have it at the start of the shift? Yes, sir. So, when could you have lost it? Uh, I don't know, sir. How did you hurt your hand? I can't remember. You've spent quite a lot of time today with a bereaved man in Relton Close, yeah? Oh, yes, sir. Mr Dodds was very upset about the death of his wife. I thought it best... I'm not interested in why you were there, Dave, just uh, when you were there. At what time did you leave Relton Close? Well, it must, must have been about 15 minutes ago. Um, ten past six, sir. Can anyone confirm that? Mr Dodds, for instance? Well, he's not around. He uh, left for Hereford to ID his wife's body. And no-one else saw you leaving? Well, I spoke to Sergeant Cryer on the way back in. Uh, on the radio? Yeah, in the panda, yeah. So he didn't actually see you? Didn't you hear any sirens in Relton Close? There were two police vehicles and an ambulance. Were there? When? At 17.51. Uh, Dave? Yeah? A man was assaulted in a children's park just off Relton Close by someone who used a police-issue CS spray. Now, a witness says that she saw you at the scene assaulting the victim. <sighs> You've just admitted that you were still in the area at that time. Your hand's bleeding, and I hear you haven't been yourself today, so I think you'll agree. This doesn't look good. What do you want? We need to ask Mr Jefferson some questions. He remembers who did it. Does he now? It was PC Quinnon from Sun Hill. 
He sprayed me in the face with CS gas and whacked me round the head with his metal truncheon. That's right. Just like I said. Yeah. Almost word for word. This never would have happened if I'd have been with him. How would you have stopped it? I wouldn't have left him alone for, for a minute. Oh, I don't. The very man. Uh, look, the thing is, I've got to take some shots in the cells, right? And, uh, well, I wonder if you mind posing for me as a prisoner. Well, obviously, I can't use a real prisoner, so, look, what I was thinking was, if you, like, maybe stick your own shirt on again, change your trousers and, uh, well, any chance some photographs? Bloody fool! Go! <laughs> you make me sick. You sit in your nice warm office playing with your stupid little computer while I'm out there risking my life. You think it's all a big game, do you? Do you? Dad, if let it go right what? now! You all right, Red? Look, 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 just, just get lost, will you? You went mad. I'll talk to you about it later. Hell on. What the hell's going on? Hey? Look, we've just come from St Hugh's. We were gonna go in and talk to Mr Munro and tell him that this, this story about you hitting the bloke was a load of bollocks. But after all this, I'm not so sure. Right, I'm not gonna say anything about this, and nor's Vicky. But you know what he's like, he won't keep quiet, so it's gonna come out. So you better make sure that you've got a good alibi for the assault on Jefferson. Well, have you? <laughs> What's the point? And he said that he recognised his assailant. Both him and his girlfriend said that it was Dave Quinnam. However, the doctor we spoke to said Jefferson changed his story shortly after he woke up. You see, to begin with, he couldn't remember anything. But then he spoke to his girlfriend, and suddenly it was all crystal clear. Come in. Dave, can we help you? Possibly so, yeah. I've got something to tell you about what happened today. Right. Well, let's hear it. I left her out on close before I told you I did. I wasn't there when the assault took place. I'm sorry I lied to you. When exactly did you leave? Must have been about 5.40, sir. Ten minutes before the assault? Something like that, yeah. Where did you go? St Hughes. Why? It was the only place I could think of, sir. Did anyone see you there? Yeah, I spoke to a nurse, Jenny Delaney. She, um, she can tell you what time I got there. Must have been about quarter to six. I stayed there half an hour. Well, I'll ring her and ask if she can confirm She'll be off duty now, sir. It's all right, sir. I've got a home number. As it happens. Well, thank you, George. Stay with me, Dave. Uh, the rest of you can go. Look, I'm sorry, OK? I'm sorry. I'm so I, I needed some time to myself. I couldn't face anything, OK? I think I know who did the assault, sir. Oh? The bloke whose wife died. I'm pretty sure he nicked my CS spray. I could go and see him. You said he was off to Hereford. That wasn't true either, was it? <laughs> Look, I know I've been a bit crap today, but give me another chance, yeah? Let, let me go and see him. I, I, I know I can sort this out. I will. I want a word with you. Come in. You can wait out here. Uh, actually, Dave, I think we'll keep the door open. I want to ask you some questions. I'll answer the big four. Name, rank, number, date of birth. Did you nick my CS spray? You shouldn't have left your belt on the table, should you, you naughty boy? Have you any idea what you could have done to me? To you? I was in the frame for GBH! It was me that did it. Got him in the eyes before he saw me. Cracked his head wide open. What do you think about that? I'm arresting you for theft and GBH. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention when questioned something which you later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. You OK? Couldn't be better. Dorchester compared to the last cell I was in. Where was that? 
Basra, Iraq. You were captured? Captured, tortured, nearly killed. Different men back then. That's what the wife says. Said. You don't prove that you're a man by beating somebody else up. Doesn't make you a hero. We both know that's not true, don't we, Dave? All that time we were talking back in your flat, was it, was it just so you could nick my CS spray? You were the one who wanted to stay. So that's all I was good for, was it? To give you a weapon? I'm a loner, Dave. Didn't need your company. Don't need it now. Are you pissed off because I got you into trouble? Or are you jealous because I did something you can never do? I thought it was just RAF pilots that got captured in Iraq. And those blokes from the SAS? Fancy a bit of overtime? What? Fancy a bit of overtime. When? Tonight. Now. <sighs> well, I, I don't know, Sarge. I've had a very difficult day. I'm giving you the chance to sort yourself out. Sarge? Dave, they all think you've lost your bottle. I hope that's not true. And if it's not, I want you to come on a drugs raid tonight. Or you can go home, pour yourself a cup of cocoa and have an early night. But if you do, don't bother coming in tomorrow because all your mates will think you're a tosser. Show them what you're made of. Well? Right, we're expecting them to be dealing in the underground car park at 20 hundred hours. We're not expecting them to be armed, as he's never carried a weapon in the past. But he will be surrounded by some pretty heavy muscle, including this lovely lady here. She should be approached with caution. All in all, we have to be fast and aggressive. Yeah, I want everyone wearing full protection. Uh, he said he wouldn't be carrying a weapon. I'm taking no chances. Matt, you'll be going in first, yeah? That's right. Dave and I will be up the front. I'll take the gates out and then we'll pile in. There should be only four bodies enough for us to cope with. As long as everyone pulls their weight. There's no way he's ready. This is ridiculous. We'll soon find out. Yeah, all right. See you in a minute. Andrew? Sir? I'm concerned about Dave Quinnan. You sure it's wise to put him through this? He volunteered. Yes, I know, but he's had a very long day and apparently a difficult one. I was rather surprised to hear he'd been assigned to a mobile unit. Couldn't you find him something a little less demanding? <laughs> you were keen for him to come back on duty. Yes, but there are duties and duties. And they're for me to sort out, sir. I am not disputing that, Andrew. Are you, sir? Well, it seems to me, with respect, you're trying to run my team. I wouldn't dream of it. I'm glad to hear it, sir, because I know these PCs far better than you do. I know when they need help, when they need more time to recover, and when they need to kick up the backside. Now, please don't forget that I'm the one who works alongside them all hours of the day and night. Whatever I think's best for them almost certainly is best for them, sir. I hear what you're saying, Andrew. If the wheels come off tonight, we'll talk about this again. Are you sure he's up to it, Sarge? He's just up here had a few rumours. He'll be fine, trust me. You've been up to me, I would have sent Dave home. <laughs> all right, that's enough. Two weeks ago, you were all bloody because you thought he was going to snuff it. Target on plot.
Go, go, go. Right! stayed on now. Of course he is. He was the only one on overtime. Uh, yeah, and I hope you'll be buying us all a few drinks when your compensation comes in. It should be a few grand, you know. Oh, you can take us all somewhere special. Yeah, I don't want any compensation. Hey, I'm not applying for compensation. <laughs> Why not? I was, I was just doing my job. I was unlucky that night. I don't deserve a payout just for being unlucky. Oh, come off it, Dave. You can't turn down a few grand. I can do what I bloody well like. I was the one who got stabbed. You weren't even there. Accept my apologies. I've had a bit of a day. I could do with some sleep. Excuse me. Dave, 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 wait a minute. Wait, wait. What do you mean I wasn't even there? I tried to get in to help you, to, to save you. But I did everything I could, don't you believe me? Watching you like that, it, it nearly killed me. It nearly killed you? No, oh, all right, I'm sorry, but you, you know what I mean. I feel terrible. It, it's not a day goes by when I, when I don't think about it. Snap. Yeah, well, at least you haven't got the guilt. Oh, well, so I'm the lucky one, am I? In a way, yeah. But I can't change what I did, but I'll never stop wishing that I'd, I'd done it different. But you, I mean, come on, you, you said yourself. You can't remember that much about it. Well, I lied. I remember every single detail. Well, why didn't you say? Well, I didn't want to talk about it. Not even to me. Well, especially not with you, George. Fine. All right, but you're not the only one involved here. The whole team has got to live with what happened, and they've got to live with you now that you're back. And I'll tell you something. Nobody's going to put up with another day like today. You were crap. You said so yourself. Now, if you're not ready, just, just say so. Because otherwise somebody else is going to get hurt, maybe even killed. All right, message received, George. You can shut up now. All right, I will. You know, back in the car park... Yeah? I didn't know what I was doing. I was scared. We all get scared, Dave. Yeah, but the worst thing is, I don't know what I was scared about. I'm sorry, I don't know what you mean. Well, all day long I've been frightened and I don't know why. You understand what I'm saying? Well, look, you'll be back to normal before you know it. Come and finish your drink, yeah? No, I'm going to head off home. Are you sure you're going to be OK? Yes, George. I'll be fine. to that girl to get so obsessed. Sam, don't start, not after the day I've had. Oh, well, that's funny. I could swear I had the same day. Just don't, all right? I'm sure you're all right. Positive. Not me for. No, I'll be fine. I'll be fine in court. I'll be even more fine if you stop clucking around me like I wasn't. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> 